So you can also see here that this bushing is clearly split and the, the grease coming out of it. So Howdy everybody. We are headed up Mount Lemmon today. Quite a rainy day, a little bit, that's not really even cold today, it's just a little bit rainy, 63 degrees uh, here in Tucson. We've had actually a really cool October. This has been the coldest October on record, and we've had a decent amount of rain as well. So I'm gonna go up Mount Lemmon. You guys have seen this place in my videos many times, but my goal is to go down the backside, which you have not seen yet. Um, so we'll see what we can find up here. See if uh, see how cold it is up on top. It's a possibility it could be sleeting, maybe, but we'll see. The drive up Mount Lemmon is about an hour or so. It's 26 miles. The elevation at the ski resort is about 9,200 feet, and at the little town's about 8,000, give or take. And this is a great place, as I mentioned before, to ride your bike, hike, camp, do all kinds of fun stuff. It's a nice time to drive up here, especially with the weather the way it was today. I thought it'd be a nice day to go out. But you can see the trees and some near the top are kind of changing colors. And I'll show you some pictures of, of at the bottom of the road near the town here in a second. But the main point of going up here was just to get to the control road, which is near the fire station. And that's basically at the top, um, not the ski resort top, but near the town. And we're gonna go down that control road. And the plan for the day was to go down, film that, and then head towards Oracle, which is kind of to the northwest. Okay, so here's the start of the control road, and almost immediately I started hearing a, a rattle that was unusual, and I think was my sway bar bushing starting to come off. Um, this road is pretty mellow for the first couple miles, and then there's a few spots that get a little bit rough, but it was nothing major. Um, but really what I want you to listen for on this road is um, there's going to be my jack rattling and then in the background you can kind of start to hear a little bit of a clunk and then that um, gets more pronounced as the ride goes on. Um, I'm also going to play for you where I think my hitch hit the ground and then I want you to listen for a kind of a popping sound which is when I believe the sway bar bushing became detached from the car. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's what it was, but it certainly sounds like that. So let's listen in on all that stuff and see what you think. So here's the hitch noise right here. And you can see there was nothing in the road, no rocks, nothing sticking out. So it was kind of at the bottom of a little bit of a dip. And that was that noise there. So if you listen here when I have the camera outside the window, you can really hear the clunking now. So listen to this, and this to me sounds like the bushing coming free. So after that noise, you can kind of hear now, it starts to get a little bit louder, and you can hear the full rattle that I dealt with the rest of the drive. And the full rattle is from that sway bar bushing swinging around and hitting. All right, so now that you've heard those noises, let's talk about what was found when I got home and the damage that was done. Number one right there, that's the sway bar bushing and the sway bar bracket. That came detached from the frame of the vehicle. That is supposed to be attached to the frame. I also had a bent end link and a dented and bent, slightly bent uh, trailing arm. Um, I'm not sure that those incidents are related, but that's what we found underneath the vehicle. But the noise was definitely that bushing, which you can hear there. And basically it was loose, came detached, and was just banging around under the car. 
and also transversing noise to the other side because it was still obviously attached to the other side. So I'm going to show you the what the bushing is supposed to look like and how it's supposed to be attached to the car and then we'll talk more. So here's the passenger side and you can see the silver is the actual bushing itself and it's attached to the bracket and then the bracket is attached to the car and that's how that should look compared to the other one spinning free. A couple days later I got in with Subaru and they got the car up on the lift and this is what they found. So the circle on top is the sway bar bushing back in place. They were able to thread the bolts in no problem so there was no damage to the bracket or the bolt holes. And then the arrow below that is the trailing arm and you can kind of see it has a little bit of a bend to it and I'm going to show you that a little bit further here um, as we go along. All right, so it is clear by looking at this picture. If you look at the bar that's going across the top and then the control arm, look at the space between those two. That is on the affected side. Now look at the passenger side. You can see that that space is significantly bigger. So there definitely was an impact to that um, trailing arm. All right, so here we are under the car. Here's the trailing arm. And it almost feels like there's a little bit of a hit here and on this side. And it's not significant, um, but if you look at the distance between this uh, trailing arm and the differential, you can see that there's a smaller gap there than there is on the side that is not affected. All right, so here's just another example. You can see that finger does fit in here but it's a little it does touch it on either side right about here where the impact was you can see the impact here or the other side now okay so here's the passenger side you can see my finger slides easily through here so there was definitely an impact on this on the other one at this point I'm still not really sure that the incidents are related and here's, here's why. So this is the end link, and this is definitely bent as well. The end link you can see is connected to the, the wheel carrier, I guess you'd call it, and this up here at the sway bar, okay? This, I think, bent because the bushing came detached, and this was basically free to move around in a way it's not supposed to. It's still connected on the other side. As you're driving, you're still gonna get feedback back and forth through here. And I honestly think that's what bent this. Um, now this may or may not have been bent the same day that I noticed that the sway bar bushing came off. I'm not convinced that it's the same day. Now the big thing is if the sway bar bushing was pushed out or the bolts and the nut came off because of an impact, my opinion is you would have damage to not only the bracket itself, which clearly there isn't any, or you would have damage to the holes where the bolts go in, which there isn't any. Um, how they would rattle loose, I have no clue, but it, it's at this point, and I could be wrong, I just don't understand exactly how that would have happened. Um, an impact here affecting the end link and the sway bar to me doesn't really make sense um, because they're not connected at all. So, and it's not enough of an impact to cause the frame here to push up and, and affect the sway bar. And even still, again, it would have caused damage. So I'm really not, not 100% sure as to why that happened. All right, so I wiped the uh, trailing arm down you can kind of see where the paint's been taken off there and how this is a little bit in. Um, maybe a little bit of a scrape there. The good thing is I can't really see anything else that's looks like it's taken any significant damage. I did look, I did notice, you know, there's a little bit of impact here, just like a very slight scrape um, from off-roading. Over here is similar. And the thing is, you know, a lift is not really going to change this um, as far as the the uh, body lift kits. You know, these all these things are going to be the control arms and all the 
the trail arm, everything is really going to be the same height. You're just lifting the body. And in fact, I think most of the kits have a, a leveling thing to make sure that everything stays pretty similar to stock as far as the angles and everything. So, you know, it's just a matter of looking and seeing if somebody actually does a suspension, a suspension lift for these guys. I think most of the ones I've seen are all body lifts. Um, but you're looking at more of a significant change of driving feel and things like that, I think, if you go with the suspension lift. So that all needs to be weighed to determine if I want to mess with that. All right, so what are the conclusions from this and what is it going to cost to repair? Um, essentially, I'm looking at about 450 bucks if I go through the dealer. Parts, about 150 labor, 140 and then I also need an alignment. Um, Really, the big thing that concerns me with this whole thing is really why did that sway bar bushing come out? Um, there is no damage to the holes either on the frame of the car or the bushing, so it really doesn't make sense that it would be an impact that would cause that. Um, so that's really what I'm going to try to get to the bottom of. I don't want it to happen again. I don't want it to happen to the other side, so um, this is certainly a concern. You know, as far as the trailing arm being damaged, clearly that was my fault and um, I did hit something either that day that I don't know about or I hit something in the past and that does need to be replaced because it's clearly bent and could be throwing off the suspension a little bit though I don't really feel anything at all. Um, Subaru has been cool through this whole thing. I mean Trent my buddy who works there and then Scott the service manager and Jason is my tech who's I've been working with or service writer. Um, all the guys are great. Um, so I'll be working this out with them. Um, I'm waiting for parts, which will be here in about two or three weeks. So uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any suggestions, let me know what you think. And um, stay tuned for more crazy videos, guys. Thanks for watching.